Okay, people, we have a spicy one. Just wanted to warn you. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of News. The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. Okay, people, if you would take a quick second to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell to get notified, we drop new episodes of Forever News every Saturday, 12 p.m. EST. And throughout the week, we re-upload those segments for your viewing pleasure. Hit them buttons. Let's jump into the stories. And first story on the docket. People, this one right here, one heck of a scandal. This one right here, I ain't gonna lie. I was shocked when I read it. I was like, oh, wow. Because not only is this a shocking story, a mass scandal in the anime industry but also this is definitely going to affect a lot of anime that you love because of this voice actor major major voice actor recently got into a massive scandal over an affair now in case you don't know about japan they are very strict on basically you know keeping it legit when it comes to your relationships despite the fact that hey you know relationships and work shouldn't go hand to hand just because you're a dirtbag in your relationship as long as you ain't break no laws ideally you know it shouldn't result to any sort of consequences for you at the workplace but in japan they do not play that and yeah famous voice actor that's done roles such as i believe reagan in mob psycho 100 ghetto and jujutsu kaisen griffith and berserk although that one's kind of fitting i guess you would say uh recently got into a massive scandal that he has been involved in for over 10 years let's read so you guys know exactly what's going on but this one right here I'm still shocked. Voice actor Takahiro Sakurai acknowledges report of 10-year extramarital affair. The weekly Bunshun tabloid newspaper reported on Wednesday that voice actor Takahiro Sakurai has been engaged in an extramarital affair for at least 10 years with a writer for his PS Genkidesu Takahiro travel radio show. The show abruptly concluded on Monday after 9 years. Sakurai's talent management agency Intention published a statement on Thursday that acknowledged the article's report and apologized to the unknown woman, Sakurai's fans, and all involved. Weekly Bunshun reported that the writer with whom Sakurai had an affair was unaware that Sakurai was married until just before the recording of P.S. Genkidesu, Takahiro's final episode. The voice actor had been discreet about his marriage until last month when he revealed his marital status to Weekly Bunshun. The newspaper added that the writer was so shocked after finding out that Sakurai was married that she had to be admitted to the emergency room and retired from the writing business afterward. I smell lawsuit. Weekly Bunshun's article reported that its staff approached Sakurai as he was heading to work to verify its findings. According to the article, Sakurai acknowledged the findings of its reporting but also said that he wished to elaborate more later. Weekly Bunshun added that the head of intention came to the newspaper's editorial office later that evening on Sakurai's behalf. According to the newspaper, intention's representative said that the affair had already ended when Sakurai's marriage became public and that the agency itself was unaware of its marital status until then. Intention's Thursday statement regarding the article also noted that Sakurai feels great remorse and will endeavor to win back the trust of his fans. Dog, it ain't work for My Hero Academia's endeavor. It ain't gonna work with you, fam. Sakurai's numerous voice roles include Griffith and Berserk, Gyo Tomioka in Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, Suzaku Kururugi in Code Geass, Ayame in Fruits Basket, Rohan in and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable, Reagan in Mob Psycho 100, Sasori in Naruto Shippuden, Francis F in Bungo Stray Dogs, Dude is Cloud in Final Fantasy. And again, I believe he also does Ghetto in Jujutsu Kaisen and Griffith and Berserk. Like, his list goes on and on. He is reprising his role as Reagan, I don't think anymore, in the ongoing Mob Psycho 100 Season 3 anime and is also voicing roles in the ongoing Urusai Yatsura Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. Oh my god! Utawa Mono Mask of Truth and Blue Lock anime and also has roles in the upcoming Junji Ito Maniac Japanese Tales of the Macabre Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 and the Saints Magic Power is Omnipotent anime as well as the Mononoke and that time I got reincarnated as a slime anime films. Jeez Louise. Dog this is so messy right now because for starters when it comes to Japan as I've stated they don't play this stuff. I've seen already multiple cases 
of voice actors or people in the industry in general getting caught in scandals such as this where they cheated on their wife and things like that that they lose all their positions but this one is a little bit deeper because he is involved in a lot of very current and very pivotal roles in big anime right now dude he's gonna be in the next Jujutsu Kaisen season he's in Blue Lock he's in Mob Psycho 100 as one of the main characters granted they in the English dub recasted Mob so that's not completely out the question but he is in so much stuff the slime series like this is going to be very interesting to see how they play it are they gonna pull a move where every single day we're getting new news that he has been separated from certain roles I mean he might be going down the yay route we will leave that can of worms right there but if Japan has taught me anything it's that when scandals like this come about usually your livelihood your career and your reputation is completely over with donezo you're finished in the business of entertainment because that's just the way they roll over there and I'm not even gonna lie looking at this story I'm still shocked because the woman going to the hospital over this well granted if he was cheating on his wife and had her completely fooled for a decade plus yeah I could see honestly somebody having a mental breakdown over that and on top of that her quitting and stuff like that you could throw the argument that her writing career probably has been so tied with this man because they've been together for 10 years pretty much he's been cheating on his wife for 10 years and then just recently she finds out wait you're married this is going to get a lot more messier as the days and weeks go by but i'm wondering i guess well you know prayers to that woman prayers to his wife and you know best wishes and all that good positive energy because i know that they're probably all going through it sakurai though his livelihood is probably finished and i'll keep it a buck with you and again this is their culture so i'm not one that you know i can really have an opinion per se but just from my point of view from where i'm looking at it it looks a little bit wild that he's about to lose all of this because of his personal relationship and again it's not that he broke any laws it's not that he's even said anything crazy or outlandish homie was you know messing up in his relationship so i don't know how they're gonna play this one i don't know if he's too important over there because he's tied in so many roles that they might try to sweep this one under the rug but usually when it pops up in this magazine in particular the weekly bunshun usually that's a case of dog they about to cut him down they about to get rid of him i'll definitely keep you guys in the loop as the story develops but it's not looking good for soccer I and I'll say in general on a personal standpoint that is absolutely a scumbag and what's wrong with you dog like 10 years of you having this whole other life I mean at the end of the day I know there's a lot of people that hey they're capable of doing that but I don't know my personal opinion it's like on a personal level dog you screwed up really bad and I don't think that that per se should translate over to his work environment his work life his professional life but still like personally yeah, a bit of a scumbag, though. 10 years, come on, though. You should have just either gone with the other woman, like you try to have your cake and eat it, too. And right now, they just blew out your candles, boy. But let me know what you guys think about this whole thing. Do you think that they're going to punish him by taking all his roles away? They're going to do him like, yay, or where is this all going to go? And on another side of scandals, we have another big arrest over there in the whole world of things. In case you haven't been following the story of the whole Japan Olympic scandal of arrests and bribery and all that stuff, pretty much one of the heads of Katakawa recently was caught during the Tokyo Olympics he was committing crimes by basically trying to bribe some of the committee that do all the sponsorships and whatnot to get Katakawa sponsorships in the door and that is a no-no that is a very big like hey what are you doing and a lot of dominoes have fallen since then like the head of Katakawa recently had to resign and on top of that he's facing charges and whatnot and it seems like more people are getting wrapped up in it probably some people are snitching like hey Hey, how about you give me a slap on the wrist and I'll tell on all of these big corporate dudes on top of the people that actually were accepting the bribes. ADK Holdings president arrested in Olympic bribery scandal. Tokyo police served an arrest warrant to advertising firm ADK Holdings president Shinichi Ueno on Wednesday on suspicion of bribing former Tokyo Olympics committee member Haruyuki Takahashi with 47 million yen, about $313,500 to select ADK 
as a marketing agent for the Olympics, with police raiding the corporate headquarters of ADK Holdings on the same day. Police also raided the headquarters of toy merchandise company Sun Arrow on Wednesday, following prosecutors accusing Takahashi of accepting a total of 7 million yen, about $47,000, previously reported as 8 million yen, in bribes from Sun Arrow to select companies as the license maker of the game's toys. Police also served a fourth arrest warrant to Takahashi for allegedly receiving a total of 54 million yen, about $362,000, in bribes from ADK and Sun Arrow. And again, police had previously arrested Takahashi three times on suspicions of accepting bribes related to Olympic sponsorships from three other firms, Aoki Holdings Inc., Karakawa, and Daiko Advertising. Takahashi was also a former senior managing director of Japanese advertising agency and exclusive agent for the Olympic Japanese sponsors, Dentsu Inc. And yeah, that thing has been getting very messy and more than likely everybody involved is going to go down. Now, granted, some might get with slap on the wrist, just keeping it real, depending if they have the connections, depending if they have the bread to talk because and if they actually talk, just being honest with you, because that's usually how it crumbles. The people at the bottom is going to get absolutely screwed, but the people that, you know, just have the weight to throw around, so to speak, are going to probably get off with like probation and whatnot. Like, again, I will be deathly shocked if the head of Katakawa goes full term into some sort of prison sentence. I fully expect for him to get probation or something like that. Similar to the head of Studio Ufotable with his whole tax scandal. I'm gonna guess that there's a possibility he might get a slap on the wrist. But then again, considering this is the Olympics and it basically is an embarrassment to Japan with all of this going on, this might turn out even harder for them. And if more people already are getting arrested and whatnot... Woo, we might not ever see the Olympics over there in Japan and Tokyo ever again because, yeah, that's pretty embarrassing and they basically disgraced Japan in their eyes. That's usually how they see it with their pride and whatnot by doing all of this mess. But I'll keep you updated on it, but yeah, more arrests going down in the whole Tokyo Olympics bribery scandal. And since we're in the light of scandals, let's talk about another one. I haven't heard a scandal in this side of the anime world in quite some time. Last time I heard a scandal in particular like this was over, I believe, it was Dragon Ball Kai there was a big scandal with one of the composers that he was straight up ripping off legend allegedly ripping off legendary music from all over the world for the Dragon Ball Kai anime so much so that pretty much they had to completely throw out everything that he composed and go back to the original Dragon Ball Z music for Dragon Ball Kai it was an absolute mess I don't know whatever happened I don't know if they got sued I'm not sure but either way it was very bad but this one is even worse than that because yeah that was you know copyright infringement and all sorts of craziness like how did dude get away with that for so long the world may never know maybe it was sample clearances that never got quite cleared it could be i don't know but this one pretty bad because this one says anime slash game music composer hidekazu tanaka arrested for alleged attempted blank assault you can imagine what that word is police arrested 35 year old game and anime composer hidekazu tanaka in tokyo on Monday on the charge of attempted forcible indecency, a Japanese legal term which includes lectual assault. NHK reported that Tanaka had allegedly uttered obscene words at a teenage girl and forcibly took her hand at a train station's bicycle parking area in Tokyo's Meguro Ward in August. According to police, the girl reported the incident at a nearby neighborhood police outpost. Police then reportedly found footage from the station's security camera of a person following the girl. Tanaka has composed numerous songs and soundtracks for anime and video games during his career, most of it spent at the music production company Monaka. During his 10 years at Monaka, Tanaka composed music and songs for anime such as Niaruko, Crawling with Love, Aikatsu, Servant X Service, The Idol Master Movie, Kagayaki no Mukogawa E, The Idol Master Cinderella Girls, Sword Oratoria, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, On the Side, He Told Bochi no Marumaru Saikatsu and Idly Pride. He left Monaka at the end of July 2021. He is perhaps best known for composing the first opening song, Star, for the Idol Master Cinderella's Girls anime, as well as composing the anime soundtrack. He also composed and arranged many of the songs in the larger The Idol Master Cinderella Girls franchise. More recently, he is credited as the composer 
for the second and fourth versions of the opening song 1, 2, 3 for the Pokemon Journeys the series anime and composed the opening song Ichigo Iche Celebration for the second season of Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out anime. He composed the ending song Calendar Girl for the Aikatsu anime. So yeah, he's done some pretty big things. Uh, for the most part, the ones that I'm really familiar with again is of course Pokemon Journeys. That was freaking nuts. And um, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Like, wow, what, what is going on here, fam? From the briberies in the previous story to this and uh, the voice actor, Jesus Christ, Japan, y'all right over there? Like, hey, at least we know it's not only the West that is doing some wild stuff. Japan is doing crazy stuff too. But yeah, I figured I'd bring all of that to you guys' attention. Quickly, let's take a moment to get serious because we just found out that a major and prominent and even legendary voice actor passed away. Um, he's done some pretty big roles, some legendary roles, and just in general, another pioneer has passed on. Voice actor Michael Kopsa passes away at 66. Voice actors and actors Mark Hildrell, Peter Kalamis, Shea Hampton, and Mackenzie Gray have all variously revealed on Sunday and Monday that voice actor Michael Kopsa passed away on Sunday, October 23rd. He was 66 years old. Kopsa is perhaps best known for his role as the English voice of Char Aznable in Mobile Suit Gundam. If you don't know about Mobile Suit Gundam and Char Aznable, first of all, that's like one of the most popular characters from the franchise, and that's pretty much one of the characters that started it all. And wow, that's, you know, we lost a, a legendary role, a legendary voice actor. He also provided English voice for Cole Valka Zero, Huey the Constantly Put Open Commanding Office, in the various Galaxy Angel anime. Outside of anime, he's known for his various appearances in Stargate SG-1, X-Files, The Outer Limits, and voicing Beast in X-Men Evolution. Oh my god, I loved X-Men Evolution, and I used to, when I was little, think that Beast, especially in that series, was so freaking cool. Don't get me wrong, I really loved Beast in the original X-Men, you know, the... Yeah, yeah, that one. But again, RIP to this legend. Um, keep on piloting that Gundam in the next life. And I'm not saying that in any joking manner. This man was a legend. He did some incredible work. And thank you for everything you provided to the anime voiceover world. And just in general, thank you for, you know, contributing to a legacy that is going to continue on. Char Aznable and Gundam are legendary, iconic roles. And on top of that, you was doing great work even before that. X-Men Evolution, Beast. That was my jam when I was younger. Salute. Moving forward, for people that know about the success of One Piece Film Red and even Dragon Ball Super Superhero, yeah, it has done so freaking well that it pretty much helped Toei Animation to increase in totality its profit margins for the year, its annually quarterly updates, and yeah, it looks like these movies have done very freaking well. In particular, I'm going to imagine more so Dragon Ball did overseas, while One Piece did domestically amazing, and One Piece is about to come out again in case you don't know. November 4th over here in the US and North America, Canada I believe as well. It's about to go down but yeah check this out. Toy Animation revises earnings forecast due to One Piece and Dragon Ball's success. Toy Animation revised on Friday its consolidated earnings forecast for the full fiscal year ending March 2023 as well as for the second quarter from this past July to September. The company increased its sales and profit due to the success of the One Piece film Red and Dragon Ball Super Superhero anime film Films, both of which opened in Japan in the second quarter. Sales of both the One Piece and Dragon Ball series domestic and overseas merchandising rights, game rights, and distribution rights have also exceeded expectations. So expect more Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 DLC because it looks like they're never giving up on that game, huh? Consolidated sales rose from 36.7 to 42.4 billion yen, about 247 million to 285 million for the second quarter, and from 70 to 76 billion yen from about 470 to 510 million for the full year oh my gosh for the second quarter the forecast for operating income rose from 9.1 to 14.1 billion yen again from about 61 to 95 million dollars and ordinary income rose from 9.8 billion yen to 15.5 billion yen about 66 to 104 million dollars the net income was 7 billion yen about 47 mil an increase 
increased from 55 to 64 percent. For the full year, the forecast for operating income rose from 18.3 to 23.5 billion yen, about 123 to 158 million dollars. For ordinary income, from 18.9 to 25 billion yen, 127 mil to 168 mil. And these numbers represent record highs for the company, even for the net income going from 91 mil to 121 mil. All around that says to say Dragon Ball Superhero and One Piece Film Red really rose up the ranks. I'm going to throw the argument, like I said earlier, and probably even more so pin a lot of the success on One Piece Film Red. I know Dragon Ball Superheroes, it did do well overseas, but even so as a whole in totality, it did not surpass the Broly film. Maybe you could argue maybe they had lower projections for it and overall over overseas really showed up but also one piece film red it's just been a monster one piece film red has really done numbers that i mean it's one of the biggest one piece films already and it's only been out a few months and yeah it still hasn't come out worldwide so this is freaking crazy and also toy animation is sure as hell going money 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 because one piece and dragon ball continue to print money for them hey when we get in that tv anime for dragon ball return i'm just saying moving forward we have some sales updates for a whole bunch of series including Chainsaw Man for starters Chainsaw Man has reached now 18 million copies in circulation with 12 volumes so that's including Chainsaw Man 2's first volume and crazy enough that is a 2 million copy increase since the anime started and we're only 3 episodes deep so pretty much since the last 3 weeks Chainsaw Man has sold or had shall I say not sold but put 2 more million copies in circulation which pretty much for the most part means that a lot of stores realize oh that anime is coming order more books immediately this is about to sell like gangbusters and that's probably why I put out crazy numbers like that in a couple of weeks but still 18 million and with three episodes deep that is damn near unheard of okay like you don't understand how big of an achievement that is for without an anime and as raunchy and as provocative as Chainsaw Man is you could throw the argument yo dog that's like a rated R anime what the hell or rated R manga and yeah yeah, it's showing that sometimes no matter what labels they throw on something, no matter what they try and pull, ultimately if it has that thing that people love, it'll push through and 18 million, baby. I'm imagining this might make this year's because we're at the end. We have like, what, one more month. So this might make this year's top 10, but next year's top 10 best-selling manga of the year, hands down, Chainsaw Man will be in there because these sales are going to keep rolling in throughout this anime's run. And again, the sales counter starts at November. So start Starting in November, everything that it sells will go towards 2023's top selling manga of the year. But that's not all. We also have Blue Lock has 12 million copies in circulation and all volumes of the manga have been reprinted. Again, that's to be expected. The Blue Lock anime is out and the Blue Lock anime is doing pretty well from my understanding. And 12 million, that's that's pretty good. Again, it's a sports series and it's not in Weekly Shonen Jump. This is a sports series in Weekly Shonen Magazine. This is, I'm imagining, going to pick up all of those Haikyuu fans that are left in the wind. Like, where's our oh we're gonna go to blue lock Kuroko fans that are still like where's oh we're gonna go to blue lock then moseying on over to another juggernaut and a king spy family has reached 27 million copies in circulation and i believe spy family just put out what it's 10th volume or something like that and the anime has what one season and it's on its second or it's on its second core of season one right now and 27 million for something that is more lighthearted and wholesome this ushers in a new generation this showcases that you don't need to always be that boy would a dream to be hokage pirate king you know soul reaper all of that good stuff like you don't need the typical shonen battle series to do crazy numbers because spy family while it has a bit of action lloyd is a spy and all of that good stuff but still 27 million copies spy family Woo, and it's continuing to sell. And one more big seller, in case you missed it, Ruri Dragon. And the latest update is said that basically it is the highest debut for any Jump series coming into the manga world with its volume one. It did like 70 something thousand first week for an unknown manga. And as it stands right now with volume one, Ruri Dragon manga volume one has 200,000 copies in circulation. And crazy enough, it only has enough content for one volume. 
volume. We don't know when they're going to continue it. More than likely, it won't be in weekly Shonen Jump magazine. It'll be in Jump Plus because they relabeled it recently. But 200,000, that is going to be huge whenever it returns because with 200,000 and not even a, a ongoing manga right now, big numbers, fam. Big, big numbers. And yeah, that was just a big update for a lot of big series and their sales and whatnot. A lot of very, very promising series and Chainsaw Man is toot toot through the roof and Spy Family. Jeez Louise, dog. A, a wholesome spy. Hey, it is what it is, right? Next up, for people that were wondering what happened with the legendary series Ace of Diamond, in particular Ace of Diamond 2, coming to an end, a lot of people were like, no, the mangaka, you know, he reached the conclusion of his story. He was ready to go. But apparently it gets a little bit more than that. It seems as though the author was burnt out. He was pretty much exhausted mentally and physically. And that's the reason he ended Ace of Diamond 2. Says here, according to Terajima, he got burnt out writing Ace of Diamond 2 and didn't want his mental status to affect the story and characters. He wants to continue the story in the future, but not in a weekly schedule. And I completely understand. This man has been doing that manga. You know, he did part one for many years and then did part two. He probably will do Ace of Diamond 3, but if he is mentally exhausted, if he is completely drained like that, that's good enough reason. And I applaud and commend him because he could have been just chasing a check. He could have been like, dog, come on, man, that money, dog, that money. Because Ace of Diamond sells very, very well. He could have just said, nah, you know, screw it. Whatever, I'm going to push it through or I'm going to hire some assistants to do the bulk of the work. He was like, no, I'm going to do the responsible thing for my fans and I'm going to go and finish this part two up. And whenever I decide to come back, again, it probably won't be in the format it has been. And probably by the time he comes back, he's probably hoping that Kodansha has something really successful and popular like Shonen Jump Plus because Jump Plus, obviously these are different publications. He can't be in Jump Plus, but Jump Plus is a prime example of the future of where manga authors won't have to break their necks. There could be a crap ton of manga. They don't got to worry about like, well, we can only have X amount of people in the magazine because it's a digital distribution, digital publication. So he could come back and do a chapter a month or every other week or whatever floats his boat. And he don't got to worry about like, it's weekly Shonen Magazine. If I'm not weekly, they're not going to want me. So I fully respect his decision. Granted, I'm not an Ace of Diamond fan and I can understand some fans being upset. But nevertheless, you have to understand if somebody's mental health is not right, they got to step back. They have to. And it's very responsible. And again, I applaud him for it. Okay, next up, there's a few manga and series that have come to an end. For starters, uh, the Dragon Quest Adventure of Die anime recently came to an end and wrapped up. And I believe that one was going for over two years now from Toei Animation. And again, it was a re-adaptation of the classic series Dragon Quest Adventures of Die. I'm like 99% sure that the accompanying manga also came to an end alongside the anime. And hey, all good things must come to an end. And from my understanding, a lot of people say that Dragon Quest Adventures of Die is one of the best reboot anime since Hunter Hunter 2011. And I remember I watched, I want to say maybe 20, 30 episodes of Dragon Quest Adventures of Die. And I really enjoyed it. Just one of those things that I kind of forgot about. I got a million other things going on, but it was really fun. And hey, this one, there ain't nothing to be upset about, sad about. The anime coming to an end. It had a great run. The manga, again, I believe it was like an accompanying manga. Don't quote me. I'm not really sure. But yeah, Dragon Quest Adventures of Die. They got new Dragon Quest manga coming, but this... Adventures of Die thing is coming to an end and considering its success and how long it ran I wouldn't be surprised if we get more Dragon Quest anime incoming because that was pretty popular and Toei did their thing. Then we have a big one folks this one it was announced that it was ending and then they had like a countdown of a few chapters but in case you ain't here Kaguya Sama Love is War not only is ending but it's ending in one chapter Kaguya Sama Love is War manga ends on November 2nd. This year's 48th issue of Shueisha's Young Jump magazine confirmed on Thursday that Aka Aka Saka's Kaguya Sama Love is War manga will end in the magazine's next issue on November 2nd. The series will be available on the magazine's cover. The magazine will include a 12 page booklet to commemorate the series' completion, and the manga entered its final arc in October 2021, so it ran a year straight for its final arc. And uh, yeah, it just said that Akasaka began the series in Shueisha's Miracle Jump magazine in May 2015, but it moved to Young Jump basically a year later. Probably got popular enough that they were like, yo, dog, bring some of that fandom to Young 
Young Jump and Smart Move because a lot of people love it. And again, from my understanding, it sounds like it had its run fairly. It's not a cancellation of any sorts. It's just like, hey, it had its run. It's time to end. <laughs> but nevertheless, I heard it's nothing but greatness. I've only seen a few episodes and it was pretty entertaining from what I've seen. It was like Death Note in a romantic, weird way, like strategic mind games. And you could boil down to a couple of shy people like just, hey, tell her you like her. You tell him you like him. Let's end this shit already. But it's a lot more intricate than that and very enjoyable to watch. I'm just got to throw that in there. I'm not hating. I'm not hating. Don't hurt me. And then we got one more series coming to an end. World's End Harem Manga enters last arc. The official Twitter account for Link and Kotaro Shono's World's End Harem, Shumatsu no Harem science fiction manga, announced on Saturday that the manga will enter its final arc starting on December 4th on Shueisha's Shonen Jump Plus website. Additionally, the manga will be on break and will not publish new chapters on November 6th or November 20th. The manga ended its first part with the 85th chapter in June 2020. We actually reported it here on for never news we've been going a minute well on the other channel this is the official channel but i reported on it damn it and went on hiatus the manga resumed may 2021 and launched its second part on shonen jump plus website with a new title shumatsu no harem afterworld and i ain't gonna lie i've seen a good chunk of the anime i didn't finish season one if there was gonna be another season but i just remember thinking wow when they thought of fan service they must have saw into the future and saw worlds and harem because it was a little tough to watch i'm not gonna lie like ah Yes, fan service beyond belief, etchy beyond belief. It was made with etchy all integrated into every single aesthetic and piece of the series. But if that's up your alley, you might like it. Either way, the manga is ending and hmm, there again, everything must come to an end. It feels like all of the series that ended in this episode of Forever News that I reported on from Dragon Quest to Kaguya Sama Love is War. And now this one, World's End Harem, seems as though it was time for them to end. And it is what it is. All big things must come to an end too you know what i'm saying okay next up i absolutely had to point this one out because in the upcoming issue of weekly shonen jump yuki tabata gave us an update in case you missed it last week we spoke about his author comment where yuki tabata was worried because his daughter was hospitalized and in general he was feeling very down he said he was very lonely and i again sympathize wholeheartedly my daughter's been sick in the past she gets sick during the winters in particular so it's no laughing matter especially a father that loves his family and loves his daughter it really freaking hurts and it really bothers us but thankfully Yuki Tabata said my daughter was safely discharged from the hospital and I had my wisdom teeth removed I'm very happy and that's just a testament to dog even though I got my wisdom teeth removed and I'm sure he's in massive pain the fact that his daughter is home he don't care like dog I get to relax I get a week off from weekly shonen jump and I got my daughter out of the hospital I, I take the pain because I'm more happier than ever that my daughter's home big 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 just I'm so happy to hear that because Yuki Tabata always talks about how much he loves his family and to hear good news like that I'm just very freaking happy for the dude like shout outs to you man much love and positivity for your family Tabata we love you just had to throw that in there you know if I give you guys the initial report I want to give you guys an update and that was beautiful to hear okay next up we got an interview from Gege Akutami author of Jujutsu Kaisen giving us a whole bunch of tidbits about the series that we didn't know including stuff about Gojo that you're gonna be like oh wow well, kind of makes sense in a way I guess we're gonna run through it it says new Gege interview Gege gives new benchmark for power scales in terms of raw strength for Toji and Maki are heavenly restrictions a special feature of the Zenin family or is it just coincidence that both are in the Zenin family it's just a coincidence though it's possible that it's inherited is heavenly restriction something that only appears once a generation like six eyes no but it's very unlikely when Kenjaku took over the Kamo family were there other survivors aside from Noritoshi and Shino there were many others but Noritoshi's father was defeated why did Kamo change his hair to change his mood come on stop playing you know it's because you were sick of drawing it he always had his hair cut at home so he went into a 1000 yen fast haircut store without a second thought okay yeah yeah we believe you well there's actually some people that don't doubt anything these authors say these authors could say hey i just farted out eight pennies and people would be like you don't know what he's talking about he totally said he farted out eight pennies welcome to the internet did toji think about taking revenge on the zanin family no it's a delicate issue whether he naturally had no desire to or if it was because of mamaguro what's toji's type in woman jesus for real ladies ladies relax relax a woman who can support him financially <laughs> 
how much interaction did Naoya have with Toji? Not that much, all things considered. However, as a kid, he'd secretly follow Toji around. Toji just wasn't at the house very much. Was Gojo treated kindly slash lovingly as the head of the Gojo family? He was spoiled rotten. So there you have it, folks. Headline right here. Gojo was spoiled rotten in Jujutsu Kaisen. Did the Zenin family not welcome back Megumi, who had the family technique because of Gojo? Because Gojo was around, they couldn't fulfill the contract made with Toji. See chapter 138. If Gojo dies or is mentally incapacitated, the contract will come into effect. Of Gojo, Megumi, Maki, Mai, Naobito, Naoya, Toji, Noritoshi, Noritoshi, the Kenjaku, Geto, Kenjaku, who has the strongest grip strength? Ignoring Toji and Maki, it's Kenjaku wearing Geto's body. Ooh, interesting. Of Gojo, Megumi, Maki, Mai, Naobito, Naoya, Toji, Noritoshi, Noritoshi, the Kenjaku, Geto, Kenjaku, who is the strongest without cursed energy or weapons? Ignoring Toji and Maki, Kenjaku and Gojo are about the same level. After that is Naoya, Fushiguro, Mai. And shout out to Mai. That was a sweet piece of it. <laughs> oh! Very interesting. I took away that Gojo was a spoiled brat. Uh, Toji was even in the sheets a little bit of a piece of it. And in general, very, very insightful. Thank you, Gege. And I still don't believe you about that Noritoshi haircut. You know you got sick and tired of looking at it and wanted to draw something different. Stop capping, dog. Let's cut it out. Relax before people get on my case about it. Like, I'm, I'm giving you guys entertainment, okay? Come on, dog. Love me. Trust me. Next up, all my Naruto and Boruto peeps, I got a couple of pieces of Naruto and Boruto news. For starters, in case you missed it over on my main channel, which if you missed it, go subscribe to my main channel for Neverworld. Link in the description below. I report on some news from time to time, and I talk about the world of anime and manga other than news. I talk about reviews. I give you guys all sorts of stuff. Latest episodes of Bleach, Chainsaw Man. Like, go subscribe over there. But, Naruto-related stuff. According to this, Naruto officials teases an announcement at Jump Festa 2023. Jump Festa 2023 will be this December. What the heck could this announcement be, dog? Is it gonna be finally another movie? It will be freaking great because Naruto has not missed with movies since about, I wanna say Road to Ninja. Throw the argument, Blood Prison was kinda cool. It had a lot of problems, but ever since Road to Ninja, every movie was slapping. Road to Ninja had you in tears by the end. Uh, the last Naruto, the movie, amazing movie. The Boruto movie, before they gave us 200 million episodes of anime original stuff, which by the way, relax, Boruto fans, relax, dog. I've been supporting, come on, man. Let me let me just keep it real. Boruto Naruto, the movie was considered legendary and a great cap to the Naruto franchise in general. But since then, we haven't had a film. Boruto has ran a million episodes, hasn't had a film yet, but they got a filler episode for you. I'm sorry, anime original episode for you every single week. This would be great to get either a time skip movie, launching the time skip. There's no better platform than to have a big movie showcasing, hey, we're going into the time skip. It's about to get serious. It's about to get real. Or if they want to do another time Time travel thing i don't know have boruto sasuke and naruto go back to like when madara was a kid or something i don't know what they could do but i would totally be down for something like that or just in general something really dope man like boruto and naruto as a whole right now need everything it could get of course we got the sasuke manga we got the konoha shiden with mirai and kakashi manga that as you're watching this is already out go check my review on my main channel i'm sure it's up but another big movie would be just what this franchise needs and i really really hope that that's the case other than that what other things could they do aside from like merchandise my god please don't be merchandise please 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 i don't i don't care i ain't gonna lie i got a million naruto related merch stuff all around like i, do, I don't care i don't care although if it's a video game the whole storm 5 rumor that would be great too but yeah i'm really hoping that this is something to do either a sequel anime series of sorts maybe they're gonna do some simultaneous maybe they're gonna announce the sasuke retsuda in anime oh my god i'd be down for that or a uh, original sasuke anime that's going to be written by somebody that's a little bit more in tune like i don't know massage kishimoto i'd be down for that too i don't know but let's see what it is either way they're hyping this up that they got a big announcement coming for jump fest of 2023 i swear to god if it's just a recap of naruto and boruto ep oh! sorry i lost my composure no seriously it better not be a recap because i'm gonna say throw the whole shit away but also in the world of boruto seemingly this whole himawari goes to school arc is getting ready to come to an end apparently one of the big people over there one of the uh, directors from the boruto anime honda masaya said boruto is starting a new short arc in november and he's in charge of writing the script it's an original anime episode but i think i've written an interesting arc so for those fans who can't wait to see the original please stay tuned and the current Ninja Academy arc 
Dark is slated to conclude on October 30th with episode 273. Thank freaking Jesus. The start of the new arc will be from episode 274 airing on November 7th. And yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready because I ain't gonna lie. I'm not going back to that arc. There's no way in hell. Like there's one episode, just one that I want to watch is the Halloween episode where they're dressed like me, Minato and Orochimaru and Jiraiya and stuff like that. I kind of want to go and watch that. I never got a chance to. But aside from that, yeah, throw that whole arc away. Let's get something else. And usually from my understanding, Honda Masuya does some great work with anime originals so maybe this could be the beginning of the code activation leading into the manga adaptation stuff maybe that's the big news that's going to be at jump fest that they're going to showcase maybe a trailer for the code arc or something like that i don't know just give us something good man something good and hopefully this arc is good too but again honda masuya usually is involved in the great stuff of boruto so we gotta wait and see i'm looking forward to anything other than kawaki with cakes and crumpets and no next up fans of hunter hunter yu yu hakusho and yoshihiro togashi i got a few pieces of news on the man and what's going on his latest rants and all that good stuff for starters we got here that it says yoshihiro togashi's chronicle book will be released on october 28th and on it it looks like we're gonna have hunter hunter and yu yu hakusho stuff alongside other things i know he's had a couple of different manga he had was level e and i believe level e is on there as well yeah that's prince baka is on there so we're gonna have that i believe he had a manga that i got canceled that he tried to do back in like the 90s or 80s it might have been even the 80s and yeah that's gonna be very interesting to see how the internet and some anime and manga fans react to when that becomes like public knowledge because a lot of people don't know about this series and let's just say i'll give you a hint the character design for the main character was exactly damn near identical to keiko yet they were a boy yeah tagashi i guess was ahead of the time and i believe that's going to be included in there but either way yeah i'm excited for this book in general because as you Yu Hakusho, show hunter hunter level e more info on just yoshihiro tagashi himself and this looks like it's going to be a nice collector's hopefully they eventually translate this thing like these are the things that fans like myself would go and run out in droves like dog what is going to be in this is it going to give us like his life while he was writing this some exclusive interviews when he was writing his first manga what he thought of why he created level e like there's so many things that i would love to know about like please include that in this book and translate it and i'll buy it then on top of that we reported last week that in the upcoming weekly shonen jump author comments tagashi was speaking about the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh that recently passed in a very tragic but heroic way he basically drowned trying to save people out at sea and his comment actually said i remember us laughing about how both of our series had a jinx in our titles may you rest in peace and apparently that was referring to the fact that if you go to the logo for yu yu haka show it has two stars in between it and if you go to Yu-Gi-Oh, it had two stars in the title as well i don't know how that's supposed to be a jinx though can anybody refer to me the knowledge and the history behind having two stars and why that would be a jinx is it because two out of five no i'm sure there's a lot deeper of a history than that but yeah that's off the top of my head why else would it be a jinx and then in the upcoming next week's issue of weekly shonen jump here's what tagashi had to say and i ain't gonna lie i don't know how to feel about this one yoshihiro tagashi's author comment from weekly shonen jump issue number 48 all i want to do is write manuscripts all I want to do is write manuscripts. All I want to do is write manuscripts. To clear up some confusion, Tagashi used the word, which is a katakana or I'm sorry, kanji symbol, which means draw and or paint. So pretty much he just wants to make the manuscripts and he don't want to do nothing else. He don't want to ink. He don't want to do all the other extra steps. He just wants to write manuscripts. What? Hey, I want you to write manuscripts. That's what I want you to do, dog. Like, please write all the manuscripts and let everybody else handle everything else. Just write more manuscripts. We're, we're totally okay with that. If you want to write manuscripts for the next 10 years that's all you want to do it's easy for you you don't got to hurt yourself or you know jeopardize your mental physical health or anything like that write more manuscripts we are totally behind you we're going to support you the return of hunter hunter is like top 10 most read on manga plus and it's been gone for how many years like write more manuscripts and trust me nobody will be mad at you writing more manuscripts and if that's all you want to do by all means please do next up webtoons 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 in case you don't know webtoons has had very very interesting history recently with creators a lot of creators basically saying that they get underpaid by webtoons and the model of payment just wasn't adding up even for people that were getting paid directly for webtoons originals and apparently according to this they're cutting off even more funding for bigger projects and whatnot for webtoons creators this is a message directly from webtoons canvas it says hello canvas creators we created the creator rewards program previously beta creator credit in 2018 to supplement our then newly established ad revenue sharing program 
program. The program was intended to temporarily supplement ad revenue sharing program during its early phase. Despite initial plans to end the program earlier, we extended the program during the pandemic to provide further support. Shut up. You just knew that everybody was going to be at home. Just shut up. I'm sorry. I, I just hate when like these press releases just sound like straight up cockamanian bullshit. Like, no, you didn't. You was not thinking about a goddamn thing. You were thinking about everybody's going to be home. People are going to want to read more. Let's get some originals out there. Maybe we can make a spark while everybody's home. You was not thinking, just stop. Because if you were thinking about people to begin with, people wouldn't have just been a month or two ago over the summer going crazy at how low y'all pay and stuff like that. What are you talking about? As the end of 2022 approaches, we wanted to let our creators know that we are officially ending the creator rewards program. The program will terminate once January rewards are paid out in February of 2023. We appreciate every creator who's been a part of the creator rewards program and will continue our support through the ad revenue sharing program where people make pennies on there. We are also developing a tipping system to provide an additional form of support. So basically making more people have to take out of their pocket and webtoons don't got to pay anything. Gotcha. And we greatly appreciate your patience until we can share a more accurate release date of the system later this year. Thank you, the Canvas team. So pretty much a lot of the people that were getting funding and whatnot for their comics via straight up this Canvas thing, or if you hit certain benchmarks, you would get certain payments. Kapoots. After January of next year, it's done. It's over with. No more money. Pretty much if you were inspired and you thought, yo, maybe this could be some sort of way I could finally make money off my comics. They just got rid of one more avenue to potentially make money. I recommend, to be honest with you, if you are going to upload on Webtoons, just use it as a platform to get your name out there. Don't expect any real money off of there. There's creators that they get a decent amount of readership and they don't make much of anything. So don't go into Webtoons expecting to make money. Try to go to Webtoons to get whatever audience you can accumulate to your comic, to your manga, whatnot, and try to get revenue in other methods, whether it be to create like motion versions of your manga or upload the mangas entirely to YouTube and try to get monetization over there. I'm giving you guys straight game. You ain't going to make money really on Webtoons unless they straight up are directly paying you. Try and go different avenues. Try and go maybe opening up Patreons or whatnot, whatever you can do. But this whole thing in a tipping system, like that never really works, dog. Like unless you get lucky and you get people just mad, it's not going to be a sufficient way to sustain creators and whatnot. Not. You're going to have to find other avenues if you want to keep on sustaining your life as a manga and comic creator. And Webtoons takes a massive L for this. They've been taking a lot of L's and it could be that financially they're not doing as well as they hope or they were doing great. They were up during the pandemic where everybody was stuck at home reading, reading, reading. And now that everybody's outside and not really confined to their houses, they're probably like... <sighs> Yeah, the buck stops here. The money well went dry. But seriously, my heart goes out to all the creators that this is their dreams, man. You know, a lot of people dream with I dream of one day having a work, a couple of works that, you know, I can be proud of and actually get some sort of, you know, revenue stream going. But in general, make creations that can be sustained by themselves financially. And when you see stuff like this, it just motivates me more that, okay, I got to find other avenues and eventually I got to open up doors so that the people behind me can run through with with their comics and whatnot that's just straight up how i feel and again my heart goes out to the creators keep on creating don't let this stop you find other methods and keep moving forward it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward next up quick update for tokyo revengers fans in case you don't know the manga is ending as of the recording of this video i think there's like maybe three or four chapters left until it reaches its climax in november but according to this it says here and this came out october 20th tokyo revengers will be having three big announcements in the next three weeks on october 27th so by the time you're watching this, the announcement should be out November 3rd and November 10th. A second full color short story collection will be published too. So I'm guessing one of the announcements is going to be the next season of the anime with a full on trailer. I mean, they already announced the Christmas arc, but we might get a full on trailer and maybe a anime movie of sorts or a sequel series because keeping it real, this is one of the big series over there in Weekly Shonen Magazine that makes a ton of money making a sequel of sorts of another or a spinoff or whatever of somebody else that has that similar power. That would kind of you know a time leaper new time leaper in a different part of the city or whatever that would be big and it probably still keep going if you call it tokyo revenge or hokkaido avengers or tokyo avengers hokkaido something there like either way there's an avenue to make money for it so they're more than likely going to have something else going they already got two other spinoffs as it is of like a regular do like very weird stuff they, they not weird shall i say milky stuff they've been milking it okay and they're gonna keep on doing it because it makes a lot of money so yeah three big announcements one of them they're already out and two more on the way next up this caught me by surprise apparently the simpsons is doing a massive episode with full-on animation of a parody of death note dr movie animates death note parody
Marty in upcoming Simpsons episode. The Simpsons executive producer Matt Selman revealed in a podcast interview with Four Finger Discount last Friday that South Korean animation studio DR Movie, or is it Dr. Movie, will animate the Death Note parody in the upcoming Treehouse of Horror XXX3 Halloween episode on Sunday. I know, again, I'm very bad with Roman numerals. It is a legit anime, he said, animated by this fantastic animation company called DR Movie, who executed the Simpsons universe in pitch perfect Death Note anime style. Leaked footage from the episode made rounds on social media on Tuesday. Not leaked. They put that out as a press release, clearly. The clip shows Lisa Simpson discovering the Death Note called the Death Tome here and reading out its rules. And I've seen little bits from it. It does look actually pretty freaking good. DR Movie has assisted with productions of hundreds of anime titles, including background art and in-between animation for the original Death Note anime, which is crazy. And earlier this year, the studio was credited for co-production on The Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2 with Kinema Citrus, which I heard The Rising of the Shield Hero 2 wasn't that good. But either way, I'm going to throw conspiracy theory here because I believe the creators of The Simpsons have some sort of original cartoon that they've done with Netflix, considering Netflix is getting ready to do like that Death Note live action series at some given point. Maybe this is, hey, use your big IP Simpsons to make Death Note relevant again. Because to be honest with you, this feels culturally outdated like if anything you would do something that is a little bit more current in the times and attack on titan parody even though attack on titan is heading towards its end but attack on titan would be more relevant and of course like i know people will say you're a fanboy but chainsaw man or even bleach with the thousand year blood war as big as it is like those are more relevant things or one of the slime anime something like that so to be doing death note i'm gonna throw in a conspiracy again that netflix somehow some way considering they're rubbing elbows with the creators of the simpsons for another work that they have on there are pretty much having the death note name pretty much put out there again into the algorithm so when that live action comes out people are like oh the simpsons simpsons did it but either way i'm gonna watch more than likely they're saying it's a full-on anime so why not let's go i mean it's the closest thing we're getting to new anime death note considering they ain't doing nothing with the damn ip like yo what happened with that one shot dog make more of that <laughs> platinum man excuse my language one punch man fans or shall i say fans of one the original creator one Punch Man, not to be confused with Yusuke Murata, the artist that does the serialized One Punch Man, the actual original writer and creator of One Punch Man. Apparently, he's on to the next one, so to speak, because in case you don't know, the Mob Psycho manga that was also done by him with writing and art came to an end not that long ago for the most part, and he's pretty much just been doing, I guess, One Punch Man alongside Yusuke Murata. Well, apparently, he's on to the next because according to this, it says here, One's got a new manga called Versus that will be releasing November 26th, and the art will be by Azuma Kyotaro and looking at it right here from my understanding some people are saying that it's going to be similar to Record of Ragnarok it's going to be like one big battle series and I'm very excited because one made One Punch Man which I love One Punch Man one made Mob Psycho 100 I love Mob Psycho 100 and he even made me really love the web version of One Punch Man and that art was not all that and sometimes I like to say that honestly even though art is beautiful to look at if you have a really cool or interesting or exciting story it can outshine the art 10 times out of 10 like i'm always story then art and if you made me like something like again if you look at the art for the original one punch man manga the webcomic it was ooh. But thankfully, we got another artist on board to do it, and he's writing it, so now he's going to be writing One Punch Man and this at the same time, and let's freaking go, and if it's like Record of Ragnarok, I'm excited to see what One can do, because you've seen what One Punch Man be like, I don't, don't sleep on the action of what One can do. Next up, we got some various stories here I wanted to throw in for starters. We got a rare sighting for, I believe that's the creator of Fire Force. I just saw the illustration I did for the wall of Liverpool's home stadium. When I actually saw it, I was surprised that it was bigger than I imagined and i believe that's atsushi okubo don't quote me on that but yeah that this was a crazy unexpected and rare sighting of the man and the art looks dope and shout outs to him living his best life now that fire force and soul leader are done but then we got stage plays coming for starters full metal alchemist has announced the stage play for 2023 why don't they bring more of that over here to the west dog i'll go to radio city music hall to see a full metal alchemist live action stage play hells yeah bring that shit over here come on maybe it's when they do that live tour of 
Dragon Ball, maybe it doesn't do well, and that's why they don't bring this over here. But dog, imagine, just imagine, like going from a concert, like a Kendrick Lamar concert, into a Full Metal Alchemist stage play or something. That would be a night to remember forever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a short run of Kendrick doing like maybe his latest album and a couple of songs. And obviously, if you, I don't know, maybe like Taylor Swift or maybe like Nickelback or something like that. I'm just throwing examples out here. Relax. But that would be so freaking fire. And granted, you know, stage play of this could hold its own, but just imagine having your favorite artist, you know, do some songs and then you jump straight into a stage play of something like this. God, I would love that. I would love that so much. And since we're talking about stage plays, apparently Demon Slayer is getting a Kabuki play in 2024. Koyaharu Toge's Demon Slayer manga is inspiring a Kabuki play that will open in Shinbashi and Bujo in Tokyo in February through March of 2024. The play staff opened an official website that unveiled a visual cast staff and Super Kabuki 2 Kimetsu no Yaiba title. The cast includes Ichikawa Somegoro V the third, Ichikawa Danko, Ichikawa Enosuke, and Matsumoto Koshiro X. The play is part of the Super Kabuki 2 second series, which incorporates contemporary technology into traditional Kabuki. And I'm not too familiar with Kabuki stage plays. I don't know why I start thinking of uh, Kanjiro from One Piece and Wano. Maybe it's something like that. Minus the treachery, of course. Yeah, people, a couple of stage plays for Fumoto Alchemist and a Kabuki play for uh, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. And again, a seemingly rare sighting about Tsushi Okubo. Villain Saga fans, a quick update here. It says Villain Saga season Season 2 got a new trailer and from the new trailer it looked pretty promising as well as a word from the creator and also a release date January 9th 2023 January we eat and boys I love freaking villain saga uh, it says here opening artist anonymous oh so this is actually from the openings artist not from the author the first time I saw this artwork my heart was instantly captured and before I could even notice I was already engrossed in the world of the artwork yeah because I believe they leaked out the song for the upcoming anime while writing the song I was thinking of Thorfinn who lost his only purpose in life and flows into an unknown world facing love and pain as I intertwine the light and shadow that dwell within me I put my emotions into the song I feel very honored to be a part of the work that I love so much it would be very nice if everyone could enjoy River together with the series so yeah January 9th we uh going into that villain saga again finally it's been three years or oh, well four years now jeez Louise yeah villain saga okay people let's jump into the weekly shonen jump and weekly shonen magazine author comments courtesy of Jose underscore K for start as we have Eichiro Oda, creator of One Piece. I wanted to be like Bayashi TV on YouTube, so I brought some disposable black gloves. Eating hamburgers with these is great. I don't think eating hamburgers with black gloves is great, but all right. Then we got <laughs> My Hero Academia's author, Kohei Horikoshi. Every time I come home, my cat jumps into my arms. He's so cute all right power R relax chainsaw man's power <laughs> then we got yoshihiro tagashi creator of hunter hunter as we spoke about earlier i remember us laughing about how both of our series had a jinx in our titles may you rest in peace and he was referring to the author of Yu-Gi-Oh, who recently uh, passed away with a heroic deed trying to save people out at sea and what he's referring to is that the title of both of their manga had like a star in it and apparently he's trying to say that that's a jinx somehow I don't know if you use a star in the title of your series or manga. It's supposed to be a jinx, I'm guessing. And then we got Hajime Komodo, author of Martial Magic and Muscles. I did some serious drinking the other day for the first time in forever. Messing around with your friends is so fun. I want to do that my entire life. Drink responsibly. Don't, you know what I'm saying? We, we speak about another author in the weekly Shonen Magazine. All the comments is always talking about drinking. But just in general, I could only imagine being an author and dealing with weekly serialization. Probably getting a break to chill your friends it's a hell of a good time now let's hop over to the weekly shonen magazine author comments for starters we got ken wakui author of tokyo revengers i'm giving this final spurt all i've got and of course he's referring to the fact that tokyo revengers is ending within the next four to five chapters probably four by now then we got nakaba suzuki author of four nights of the apocalypse seven deadly sins i drank too much coffee oh my god when he said i drank too much i was thinking here we go again <laughs> it's coffee i drank too much coffee and felt terrible around death Deadlines. Really? Coffee usually gives me a boost, although lately I've been cutting down on my caffeine intake. Then we got Muneyuki Kaneshiro, author of Blue Lock. Lots of Blue Lock related things are being released, from the newest volume, to the spin-off, to the novel, and even a character book. If you have a chance,
chance, please give them a read. Well, yeah, that anime is popping off. So, lot of things on the horizon. A lot of good things. Then we got Hiromashima, legend, I mean, I'm sorry, author of Eden Zero, Fairy Tale, Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest. Overwatch 2 is a ton of fun. I'm so busy, but I keep finding myself playing even more. Nothing but a goat here. Then we got Gachi Akuta's author, K. Urana. Bayonetta kicks ass. And that's interesting, him bringing that up, considering the recent stuff going on with the voice actress from Bayonetta. Then we got George Morikawa, author of Hajime no Ippo. The two nearest to me with bone fractures, take care. So he must have beat some ass in his gym, because in case you don't know, he's not only the author of a boxing manga, but also has a boxing gym. Then we got Yoshitoki Oima, author of To Your Eternity. I hope you'll enjoy the anime while the manga is away. Of course, because the series is going on hiatus until January, and then going into its final arc. And yeah, people, that was the Weekly Shonen Jump and Weekly Shonen Magazine author comments. Always a pleasure. And let's wrap things up with the top 50 best-selling manga of the week, courtesy of Joe's underscore K. Okay, so we got 50 through 41, and already off-rip, I could see clearly that the Chainsaw Man takeover once again has commenced, thanks to the anime, which as of right now has three episodes out. And you can see right here at number 50, the latest volume. Is that the latest volume? No, no, no. The second to last volume, Chainsaw Man Volume 10, 13,000 this week, bringing it up to 791. Volume 8, 13,000. So it seems as though at the bottom here, of uh, Volume 7, 8, and 9 all did about like 13,000 or so, bringing them all to around close to 800 or over 800,000. Oh, also at 46, Chainsaw Man Volume 11, the final volume. Again, another 13,000. So every volume from 7, 8, 10, and 11 all did about 13,000 this week. Number 45, Tomodachi Game. That's something I really need to get back and finish that anime. I really enjoyed what I saw with 13,770, bringing its total after 10 days to 24,000. Then at number 43, more Chainsaw Man, Volume 6. Of course, that did a little bit more than the others because we got something very spicy with Reze on the cover doing 14,319. Again, yeah, it looks like a lot of Chainsaw Man volumes had did about 800,000 apiece. East. Spy Family here and there. We got, again, at 48, I missed out on that one. Uh, volume 5, doing 13,000. Then we got at number 42, Spy Family, Volume 8, doing 14,679. Damn, almost 1.8 craziness. Then we got places 40 through 31. More Spy Family, Volume 9, with 15,000 this week, bringing it to 1.744. We got Detective Conan, Volume 102, with 15,302, bringing its total to 361,000. Conan always doing solid in it's crazy, 100 volumes deep. We got Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 20 still going strong after 25 days with another 15,453, bringing its total to slightly over 1.5 mil, 1.513, not bad. Then we got a number 33, more Chainsaw Man Volume 5 this time with 15,521, bringing that total to 900,000. That's interesting, that volume sold more than a lot of the other later volumes, fair enough. Then we got a number 32, the spinoff to Inuyasha, Volume 13, Hanyo no Yashihime, aka Yashihime Princess Half Demon, with five days, bringing in 15,695. We got a 31, My Dress Up Darling, Volume 10, still going strong, with 23 days, bringing in another 15,874, for a total of 146. Good stuff. Then, 30 through 21, again, I see a lot more Chainsaw Man in here, but before that, we got a number 29, Seraph of the End, Volume 28, in 13 days, 64,000 total, bringing in 16k this this week at number 28 chainsaw man volume 4 with 16,584 928,000 that's so weird how some volumes like do people just buy random i guess probably they do because like why is this one doing better than majority of the other volumes then at number 26 another chainsaw man 17,898 bringing that up to 965 don to don volume 7 in 13 days 95,000 not bad another 18 this week still doing its thing uh, all right all right we're respecting it at number 24 chainsaw man volume 2 insane with another 19,000 this week bringing it over 1 million copies and of course it's because it has the greatest wife of all time power the stinky wife Una. <laughs> yeah doing big numbers then at number 23 we have Zatch Bell 2 volume 1 with 19,000 more this week bringing it to 111 I'm betting that that author is very happy he brought back
fact that spell because it is doing numbers and I think the manga he tried to do recently didn't fare that well. Uh, number 22, Martial Magic and Muscles, Volume 13. In 13 days, 76,000, 19,000 this week. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be fair with it and say when the anime comes, we'll check back and see what the success is because it has dropped significantly over the last year, but these still are great numbers. I mean, 76,000 in less than two weeks is not bad at all. Then we got places 20 through 11, Blue Box, Volume 7. In the last three days, doing another 20k, bringing his total to 93k in roughly about like three weeks or so. So 93,000, not freaking bad at all. That's great. Chainsaw Man Volume 1 at 19, doing 21,000 at 1 million. So the highest selling volume of Chainsaw Man so far is Volume 1, doing over a million and 21,000 this week. That's, <laughs> we're gonna see more, trust me. And at number 18, Kingdom Volume 66 with 21,430 this week, bringing it to 554. Kingdom always doing numbers. Uh, then we got Rumiko Takahashi's latest work, Mao, the creator of Inuyasha, with Volume 14 doing 24,205 days. I mean, I'd imagine she's eating off of that Yashihime manga as well. I mean, she's the original creator, so I gotta assume she gets some type of royalties off of that. I hope so, anyway. Uh, then jumping all the way up, 11, D. Gray Man Volume 28, within 13 days, 111,000 total, with 29,000 this week. D. Gray Man fans showing up. Then we got Top 10, Top 10, Top 10! Let's see, at number 10, Hikaru ga Shinda Natsu. I still need to check out what that is because in 13 days doing 104k, what is this? Who's the publisher again? Karokawa. Okay, interesting. Then Mozing on up. Let's go straight to top three. We got Chainsaw Man Volume 12 doing another 90,000 this week in 13 days, 324,000 total. And yeah, it's going to keep on rising, baby. At number two, My Hero Academia Volume 36, 105,000 this week, bringing his total to 529,000. And at number one, the absolute monstrous king that is spy family with volume 10 doing on its second week 254,753 bringing its total to 1,028,538 copies and again 13 days absolutely insane but yeah people that was the top 50 best selling manga of the week courtesy of jose underscore ke and yeah pretty freaking impressive if i do say so myself but that's all we have for this one thanks for watching i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day peace and you guys just watched another episode of forever news have an awesome day subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't I have a dream alone in my room as I sit with the tea Couldn't possibly think what I often see And you don't even know how I often blink Lights be flashing and looking at me Such an odd unique Yet I'm so unique and you're looking at me If the wolves could talk they would probably be weak And I'd probably say bitch get the fuck off me